This is the NE555. Today we are going to make a simple square wave generator. At least try to. So let's get started. So first we're going to have to take a look at the pinout. Uh, we have uh, eight connectors. The numbering is as follows. Left corner, upper corner, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we have there on eight, we have the plus five volt. Uh, connector one, we have the ground. No minus. Like that. We have pin number two. It's the trigger. Pin number three, the output. We have pin number four, the reset. We have pin number five, it's the control. We have pin number six, threshold. And we have pin number seven, the discharge. And it's this way. So to make a simple square wave generator with low frequencies, we can use this schematic on the left. I already made it on a breadboard, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Now the connectors, the numbering makes more sense due to this schematic I made on the right. Um, so I'm going to show you how this works. So as you can see, and maybe already know, there's quite a lot going on inside the NE555. I'm not going into detail about that. For now, it's more interesting about the peripheral components, resistors, etc. Uh, for making it work as a, a low frequency uh, wave square wave generator. Now what I did to make this a square wave generator is the peripheral components values I took was 30 ohms. I made this variable 10k. I had a 10 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor. It's not always necessary to take a, a electrolytic capacitor, but in this case I did. Um, and that's it, basically. Now we can uh, change the frequency by changing 
our 10k resistor. But there are a lot of variants on these uh, values. And I have a table that shows the frequencies at different values for the resistor and the capacitor. It may come in handy if you need to um, determine uh, the frequency you want. So yeah, that's it. Simple. So now I'm going to try to explain what uh, happens, how it works. Um, the capacitor, this capacitor uh, charges via these two resistors to approximately two-thirds of its uh, power supply voltage. In this case, 5 or 15 volts. Uh, when that happens, uh, pin 6 detects that and uh, shorts uh, pin 7 to the ground, 0 volt, uh, protected by this resistor, so it doesn't damage it. Um, in that case, when this grounded, uh, the uh, capacitor discharges to one third of its uh, voltage power supply voltage. In that case it's detected by pin 2 and it turns pin 7 off again. So the cycle will start again and charge the capacitor. Now that's in the, what happens. So here we have the components on the breadboard. I hooked it up to a scope, so we can see what happens. Uh, here's the capacitor, uh, resistor, variable resistor, power supply, 5 volt in this case. And when I turn the resistor, uh, we should see the frequency going up or down. Turn it now. It goes down 50 hertz, and now it goes up to around 239 hertz. So, yeah, low frequencies. So the last thing I wanted to show you was this table. Um, it shows the frequency at uh, different uh, capacitance and uh, resistor values. In my case I had a 10k uh, resistor uh, in combination with a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor. So I should be able to uh, watch values around 20 Hz mid at the minimum and 200 Hz uh, a little above that uh, as the maximum of, uh, frequency. So there are online uh, calculators but in my case I found this uh, very helpful. So uh, yeah that's what uh, I wanted to uh, show you at, uh, at last. Mm. Well, that's it. Thanks for tuning in and till next time. Bye bye.